In this video, we're going to use this working model loudspeaker of a coil of wire wrapped around a plastic cup in between some magnets to understand how a loudspeaker works. I'm going to start off by using the signal generator at very low frequency and you can see that the cup vibrates up and down very slowly. This won't produce a sound. Increasing the frequency by a factor of 10, we can see it vibrating even more. If we now adjust the frequency into the hundreds or kilohertz range, we can hear the frequency of sound that it is now producing. To get the music produced, I'm going to use just the amplifier part of the signal generator using a signal from my laptop. Now we've seen it working, let's see if we can understand how it works. So I've got a signal generator which is producing an alternating current which is going through this variable resistor and then it's going through this copper wire round the coil which is around the cup, out this side and back to the signal generator. And then surrounding the coil on the cup I've got these magnets. Now let's remove the cup and have a closer look at the magnets. This compass shows that the magnetic field is going from the magnets to the iron in the middle. Let's draw in that magnetic field. And let's also draw in the current coming in and doing one loop round and out. And let's assume for now that the current is flowing in this direction. As we have a current flowing in a magnetic field, we will get a force from the motor effect and we can use Fleming's left hand rule to predict the direction of the force. Considering this bit, if we point our first finger in the direction of the magnetic field and our second finger in the direction of the current, our thumb points up out of the screen which shows the force will be up. And in fact, this will be the same in all the pays round. If we move the hand into all of those positions because of the orientation of the magnetic field and current in all those positions, it will create a force up and that will force the cup to move upwards. But the signal generator supplies an alternating current which will cause the current to reverse its direction. When that happens, if we point the first finger in the direction of the magnetic field, the second finger in the direction of the current, this time our thumb points down into the screen and that will be the same in all the positions around and therefore that creates a force on the cup going down into the screen. The current changes direction many times per second, which means the force changes from up to down many times a second, which causes it to vibrate and produce a sound wave. With real music, it'll be a combination of lots of different frequencies of AC to produce all the notes. After the hard work of that explanation, let's enjoy a little bit more music. If you want to set up this demonstration, you'll need a signal generator with power amplifier connected through a variable resistor or rheostat to your coil of wire. And this was made with 0.315 millimeter diameter copper wire, which is enameled, so it's insulated, and I made about 10 turns around it. To get the music, I'm using the headphone output of a laptop connected into the external input on the signal generator. In order to support the cup, I have used a couple of extra bits of the same enamelled copper wire so that it's supported in all four corners and I just covered those in yellow tape so it was clear they weren't part of the circuit of the 10 turns of the enamelled copper wire around there. To produce the magnetic field I used four C cores which are normally used to make transformers in schools and I attached those four together with some tape and then I put one, two, three, four of the ceramic magnets from the motor kit with the same pole facing inwards on all of them which created that magnetic field that I showed you earlier. So hopefully that gives you all the details so that you can create this demonstration for your students.